Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. My name is Daphne Worrell, Marketing Manager for ODG by MCG, and I'm excited to welcome you to today's webinar, Introduction to the ODG Job Profiler. During this webinar, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat feature located in the lower corner of your screen. We'll save some time at the end for questions, and any questions that we don't get to, we will email you following the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be sent to you within one week. We have two presenters today. The first will be Phil Lefevre, Managing Director of ODG by MCG. Phil has oversight of product development, sales, service, marketing, and operations at ODG by MCG. He's worked for 18 years in the development and delivery of evidence-based guidelines and claims analytics. Also presenting today will be Mike Son, Vice President of Innovations and Research at MyAbilities. Mike leads research, development, and education on the MyAbilities platform. He has over 10 years' experience leading new product and process development, including introducing new technologies to the ergonomics and workplace safety industries. So we'll get started with Phil. Phil, you can take it from here. Great. Thanks, Daphne, and thanks to all of you for your time today. What I'm going to do is jump right into a demonstration. And many of you may have joined our webinar in February with product launch of the ODG Job Profiler. And I set that webinar up with a series of slides that talked about why we decided to partner with MyAbilities, a partnership that we're very excited about. I'm not going to go through that today because that webinar is actually available on demand and there's a lot of good stuff in the slides, but I think people really would appreciate jumping right into the products. And we've had some confusion too since launch about what the difference between the light version of the product is, which is included here with ODG by MCG at no extra cost, and then the upgraded version or the subscription version, which is a cloud-based solution to store your own job descriptions and a portal to engage with employers and providers around return to work. So my objective for you today is to understand the difference between the two versions and how you can begin using it immediately today inside of ODG. And then we'll also uh, have an introductory offer for folks if they'd like to uh, get on board with the upgraded version. So I've got the current web-based solution ODG by MCG open here. And folks that are using this product know it well. Others may be on legacy ODG, which looks a little older. This product was released in April of last year and allows you to leverage all the ODG content and tools in a tab-based approach. So you're no longer feeling overwhelmed or dropping down rabbit holes, but instead we bring all of the content right to the home page and of course have adopted the branding of our new parent company, MCG Health, which of course is owned by Hearst Corporation. Some of the things that we've done with the new version is taken these three content areas, disability duration, medical treatment, and cost modeling, and built them into tabs here, consolidating tools and content areas from legacy ODG, and again, bringing them all to this home page. So your disability duration screen is here. Your evidence-based care guidelines are here, along with auto authorization and a drug formulary, all corresponding to medical treatment. And then the cost modeling tool is over here on the right with a job, a new job profiler tab, which was launched in February of 2019, about four months ago. The job profiler mostly interacts and integrates with the disability duration component so that disability duration can be adjusted according to specific physical and job demands of the injured worker. It's also designed to allow you to get released to work from the treating physician around those specific demands. So let's get started, and to do that, I'll pull up a condition. I can do a search up top for any condition. I can enable codes in the drop-down, like ICD-9s, ICD-10s, or CPTs to search specifically for codes, or I can focus on the ODG medical topics to make it easier to find what you're looking for without getting buried in tens of thousands of different code sets. Down here on the bottom, I've got a human body diagram where I can select a little yellow node that allows me to choose guidelines or conditions associated with various body parts like shoulder or ankle and foot, knee and leg. And then likewise, I have about 15 or so of the top diagnoses and 15 or so of the top medical treatments, and I can select those that way. The new version is highly configurable. So 
for example, if your uh, top 15 diagnoses or procedures differ from these lists, we can match your book of business at the logon level so that your end users are seeing the stuff that you're most likely to come across, either in a workers' comp, a disability, or an auto casualty environment. We can also configure the tabs. For example, if you want to see these in a different order, or if you have different groups of users that may benefit from some tabs but not others, again, we can configure it to meet the needs of your staff. I'll go ahead and bring up an example. I'm going to select the industry's favorite whipping boy, the back sprain. And when I do that, you'll see that I've got checkboxes that appear for tabs when I have content related to this specific medical topic, in this case, the back sprain, and I've got various checks in the tabs noted. The disability duration screen is presented first, and with the new version, we really streamlined to bring in some of the most valuable information up front without overwhelming users with too much information. And so when we talked to many of our clients, we said, what are the most important values that you're looking for from a disability duration standpoint? And the resounding answer we got is we really want an A value for average disability duration and a B value for best practice or physiological recovery time. And the objective of a good case or claims manager is to drive the claim from point A to point B and capture the difference of savings. So that's what we present up front here. But we do have clients that want to see some other configurations, for example, a C value for clinical minimum, and that's as easy as A, B, and C for us to bring those in, or an M value for a maximum medical improvement. And again, we can do that at the logon level. These values are presented up here on a timeline, and then you have other things. You can put interventions here, and I'll show you what the return to work prescription looks like, which is a way to engage that physician with your return to work in your job description. Risk assessment score and short videos on each topic, and then the ODG best practice guidelines, which can be used to adjust the model. For example, the model says 10 days, but you can select the pathway. Maybe this is a mild back sprain that's designed or that's headed to a heavy manual job, and therefore that B value goes from 10 to 7, primarily because it's a mild sprain. And then down here, you've got the codes associated with the topic and the activity modifications for restricted work, along with physical therapy and chiropractic guidelines. Now, how does the job profiler interact with this disability duration information? Well, the objective here is to take each diagnosis, in this case a back sprain, and drive it down to the claim level with the refined search bar, which allows you to enter job duties. For example, traditionally we've had the five DOL job classes, sedentary, light, medium, heavy, and very heavy, and when you scroll over them, they're defined in terms of lifting. But the new job profiler allows you to put in the specific job title to get an adjustment that way. We also allow you to adjust by state and age. For example, let's say this claim is in the state of California, and maybe they're 55 years old. And let's say, in addition to the back sprain, they also present with uh, comorbids or confounding factors. And by the way, you're not limited to these confounding factors here. You can put in whatever the claimant may have in the search bar. Let's say the date of injury is yesterday. The next thing it will do is auto-calculate a target return to work date for me here. And I can specify the claim type as work comp or disability. It's not going to impact your best practice value, which is regardless of causality, but it will impact the averages. Now, if the confounding factor is one of these here, I can check a box, or if it's something else, like let's say a surgery, a discectomy, I can start to type text in and pin any one of those topics to the claim. In this case, I'm going to start with a simple back sprain that also presents in California at 55 years old with a comorbid condition of let's say, diabetes and obesity. Now, before I add a job title, let's go down and look at our disability duration values. Now, instead of 7 or 10 days, we're looking at a target duration of 15 days and an average duration of 45, which also escalates our risk profile. Now, it's still a back sprain, but because of those confounding factors, the risk scores jump from moderate to cautionary to high. And this is where the engagement of a case manager, is going, case manager is going to be valuable early in the claim. 
If I want to add a job title, all I have to do is type it in here. So let's look, for example, at the difference between, let's say, a teacher or a heavier job like, for example, a firefighter. If I bring the teacher into this claim, what you'll notice first off is that the job profiler tab will send a checkbox to say that, yes, we now have teacher associated with the claim. Alternatively, if I want to select another job description, let's say, for example, I'm dealing with a California firefighter, I can go ahead and start to um, type in the text that's specific to this job description, and then I can go ahead and select the job title associated with my claim. So now that pushes the disability duration out further to 25 days. You'll also see down here the firefighter has appeared instead of these five DOL job classes, the firefighter job description and job demand score appears here. So you can scroll over that description to get a bubble text on what the firefighter job entails. And again, that 99 is a score from zero to 100 representing the physical demands associated with a firefighter relative to other job descriptions. So for example, the teacher was only 21 because it's only more demanding than 21% of jobs, but the firefighters are 99. It's about as demanding as any job there is out there. So what do I do now? Well, the first thing I can do is approve the job description. I can review the job description. I can share it with an employer if I want to get my client to review and approve that. And to do that, I go over to the Job Profiler tab. And again, when you select any one of the tabs inside the ODG by MCG interface, it's, it's going to bring up the content associated with that specific tab, but it's going to leave the information that you put in here. So we're still dealing with the firefighter in California, 55 years old with diabetes and obesity, injured on, the, uh, on June 25th. The only exception to that is if you click the Home tab. By clicking the Home tab, it's going to clear everything out and have you start over. Here in the Job Profiler tab, again, which is brand new as of February 2019, you can see exactly what the job description is for the firefighter, and this is the standard version where we have 32,000 different job titles and job descriptions. And you can go in here and review it in terms of the description itself. You can also look at the physical demands or the demands analysis around topics like carrying, pulling, pushing, lifting, standing, climbing, balancing, kneeling, crouching, etc. And each one of these represents the demands associated specifically with being a firefighter from that standard job description. If this fits your claim in, and you simply want to approve it as is, you can select this Approve button here. Alternatively, you can share this job description with the employer to get their feedback or to get their approval. And when you click this Share button, you have the opportunity to enter your information as well as the employer's information to email that job description to get the approval. When Mike takes over, he'll show you what the link to the portal will look like for the employer that gets it. And let me stop here and clarify that you can customize these job descriptions on a one-off basis as part of the light version at no extra cost. So to manage the claim in front of you, you can customize it here, or you can send it to the employer and they can customize it. And again, there isn't any extra cost that's part of the ODG by MCG application. The upgraded version includes a cloud-based solution to not only customize on a one-off basis, but to use and leverage the portal to store and manage your own job descriptions, including the upload of job media, videos uh, taken even with a mobile phone of the job and how it's done, and that will automatically be translated into job demands. The benefit of that, of course, is that it's not simply available on a one-off basis, but instead you can store and manage all your job descriptions. And this might be something that a payer, a disability or a workers' comp insurance company offers, or TPA, as a service to their employers as a benefit of doing business with them, which of course is, is sticky as well. If they're managing their job descriptions inside your portal, they you know be less likely to leave your, your services. Alternatively, the employers can come directly and license the application so they can upload all their job descriptions and have them in one place in a cloud-based solution that's backed up and secure and keeps that information available for their claims and medical management staff to call on the job descriptions when there's an injury so that we can engage the 
provider around recovery. So again, you can share it, you can approve it, you can also customize it right here. So if you are the employer or if you're a payer and you have a job bank and you want to go ahead and customize it, you'll enter your information to store that associated with your files and then go ahead, go into the different descriptions and make the edits right there. Once you have the job description the way that you want, the best way to use it is as a communication tool around recovery and return to work. And that happens inside the disability duration screen, where the key way to engage the employers through the life version is a PDF version of the ODG return to work prescription. So this alert here tells me that if I want to hit this best practice of 25 days, I should get my return to work prescription on or before day 18 to give me a week's lead time to get a release to work from that treating physician. And to do that, I could be could simply click on the return to work prescription alert inside the timeline. And by the way, these solutions, of course, are designed to be accessed on the web-based version, but can also be automated inside your claims and medical management systems. You know, anything that can be automated should be automated to save time, and that's why we have state-of-the-art APIs that can deliver this same data into the systems you're already using. Here in the return to work prescription form, you can include the diagnosis or leave it off, depending on who's getting the form. You can input your own information here as author of the form, your desired method of contact, employer name, physician name, employee name, claim number, anything that you um, want to share in these fields. They're not required. They're not, um, they're fields that you can also leave blank. Here in the comments field, we typically see a short note from the case or claims manager to the treating physician, and you can start with our suggested text. You might say, Hey, Dr. Andrews, can you take a look at these ODG guidelines for return to work and see if they apply to Mr. Doe's case? We've added a job description, and we'd appreciate your uh, input on modified duty activities. And then you can go ahead and print that return to work prescription. And this gives you a action item, a return to work plan that can be used to engage that treating physician around recovery. So you've got claim information here in the box. You've got the job description right here. So you're not presenting this in a vacuum to say, you know, John Doe was injured on the job. When should he come back? Well, what does he do on the job? That's a critical piece of information for that treating physician, and they shouldn't have to look to find it. So here in the PDF, you have that detailed job description that's either off the shelf or customized, depending on if you customize it or have the employer do so and then you've got your target return to work date from ODG. The physician can sign off on this here as is, or there's a second page, which is a job function evaluation form. If they're not necessarily happy with this benchmark here in 25 days, they can you know, put their own guidance in here and say, maybe this case we're looking at 30 days uh, without restrictions, but we can do, let's say, uh, it's a date format you can put in, and then let's say, but maybe in 15 days they can come back with restrictions and then they use these check boxes to identify what restrictions are appropriate in the early stages of recovery. And they do so in context with the job demands and job description that comes through on the PDF. So the objective of the job profiler tool, one, is to provide accurate job descriptions either on a one-off basis in the light version or to store and manage those for employers as a benefit and as a way to engage the claims and case manager early in the recovery process with the right demands. And then secondly, to engage those providers so that they can see the job demands and they can make accurate projections around return to work, simply signing off on ODG where appropriate or going in and making the changes where they need to. As part of the light version, those changes are included on the uh, PDF forms um, or on a one-off basis inside the system. And then as part of the upgraded platform, you have the ability to engage those providers in the portal as well as store and manage your job descriptions. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike to show the uh, upgraded portal. Thank you very much, Phil. And uh, we should have my screen up there now. Uh, so thanks for having me on, uh, Phil and Daphne. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Mike Son, the Vice President of Innovations and Research with My Abilities. Uh, and we've partnered with ODG to uh, bring you this job profiler uh, and a suite of other tools. 
so what you are seeing on the screen right now is an example of the dashboard that would be accessed by, uh, by yourselves uh, to take a look at all of the different job descriptions uh, you've uh, compiled uh, by all of your clients. And what you can do is search by uh, the date these are approved, uh, how demanding each of these jobs are, uh, or by the various, uh, the various uh, customers that you're working with. Now, the whole point of, uh, of access to the system is that you can very rapidly build up an entire database of jobs. And Phil showed you a little bit as to how you could pull something from the database uh, and then begin to customize that job by uh, changing frequencies, changing forces, changing reach distances, uh, et cetera. And when you've completely customized something, you end up with a, a very detailed job profile like you're seeing here. You have the ability to take a look at a job, uh, see how the physical demands impact the body um, within that job, and be very quickly uh, and, and uh, accurately able to compare this job against a variety of other jobs. And we do that through this demand score that you're seeing on the screen here. Now, this demand score is meant to complement uh, those DOL levels uh, that are used to describe the physical demands of work, be it sedentary, light, medium, heavy, or very heavy. The big difference is that instead of having only five levels, we now have 100 levels, which makes it a lot easier uh, for you to differentiate between two jobs. So in this case here, we've got a job with a demand score of 49, which is slightly below the average uh, job that's within its own industry, uh, and slightly below the demands of the jobs that are within that company. So if you're looking at this job as a possible prospect for a return to work, you could say, this job is less demanding than we normally see uh, at this company. Now, each and every one of the jobs that we have in our database uh, come with one of these demand scores and one of these avatars where we can see uh, how those demands impact the body. In the upgraded platform, we also have technology that we're calling uh, PDAI. So not only do you get a job description that identifies uh, what the person is supposed to do, you can also upload videos directly to the platform and run this PDAI technology uh, on there. And what you end up with is a quick risk assessment uh, identifying the postures that that worker is adopting while doing their job, and a report that identifies uh, what kinematics are required. So what physical demands are required to perform that job? How much of the time are they spending doing overhead work? Or how much of the time are they having to reach far in front of them? Uh, are they having their shoulders elevated frequently? Uh, their back, their neck, that type of thing. So this is all automated, uh, and we've done some fairly extensive research and shown that this system is very comparable to motion capture systems uh, and a improvement both in the terms of the speed of assessment uh, as well as the accuracy of the assessment when compared to human observers. So very quickly, um, you could pull a job from the database, make some customizations to that job description, upload a video, and you've got a PDA or a job description, a physical demands analysis of that job uh, you know, in, a, in a very short period of time. Now it also removes some of the, uh, the need for you to go on site as you can request videos be sent directly here. And that would send out an email to one of the employers you're working with. They would get that notification uh, in their email inbox and they could upload videos uh, either from their computer or from their cell phone uh, and have it come directly into the job profile. Now the job profiles are, are easy to share from here. Um, you can send emails um, from directly in the system, or you can also uh, share via this shareable link. Uh, and that link you can send to anyone, and they'll be able to see those videos. Uh, they'll be able to see uh, any of the pictures you upload. Uh, that person is able to go in and take a look at uh, that job. Now, in addition um, to having uh, the ability to build these databases of jobs uh, rather quickly and accurately, 
We also have uh, a suite of tools that can be helped in the, the return to work process. And the first one I wanted to show you uh, is the return to work analysis as well as the functional abilities evaluation. So I can send a request out to a doctor or an occupational or a physical therapist and ask them to comment on uh, the demands of uh, this individual's job. Now, all they have to do, uh, they don't necessarily have to have a username or password. They can just enter in a four-digit code that is sent to them via email, and they're immediately presented with all of that information with the job videos, uh, the different body demands, uh, the job description, uh, as well as the full physical demand profile of that specific job. That doctor uh, or that healthcare practitioner uh, can then uh, perform that functional abilities evaluation and indicate which of the physical demands this individual might have a challenge performing uh, while they're doing their job. So if we're looking at this, um, what we'll select is say perhaps it's crouching and kneeling that the individual is having a hard time with. And then we can identify these as being either restrictions or limitations, meaning they can do this uh, to some capacity um, or they can't do it at all. In this case, we'll identify both of these as restrictions. We can add in the duration uh, of those uh, restrictions and limitations. And then that healthcare provider can add their comments uh, as they see necessary. If this simplistic form is not enough, they can also request that they get additional information, so very specific weights that the person is capable of lifting, distances, etc., cetera, um, in the form of a digital functional capacity evaluation uh, from that claims manager. Now the information in this FAE is submitted um, by that healthcare provider, and then we can go back uh, directly into our job profile and we'll see the results of that assessment up here uh, directly in our return to work profile dashboard. So in this case here, what we found is that person can do eight of the physical demands that they're required to do, uh, and two of them they have restrictions for. Now this can be repeated multiple times throughout the course of a uh, claim that was being managed uh, to give some perspective on that patient or that injured worker and how they're improving. Now, in addition to having that integrated, if we have built a, a job database using the system, we can also do uh, an evaluation on what that person is capable of doing uh, in their workplace. Now, we can compare them against their own job by looking at uh, this function, and what we get is called a job match score. Instead of saying, you know, yes or no, this person is capable of doing this job, what we're saying is what percentage of that job are they capable of doing? And if we want to make modifications to this job, uh, we can call it a modified duty position, and we can uh, add in information about that job to save it to our database uh, with that company, uh, and they'll be able to uh, go back and do that evaluation uh, or assign somebody else to that job uh, whenever necessary. Now, you can do additional customizations here. Uh, so in this case, we were saying that it was, uh, was crouching that the person was having. We could go in uh, and remove that kneeling demand uh, completely. Uh, and say, you know, that's, uh, that's the, in the scope of getting that person um, a, uh, a stool or something. And when that is uh, edited into the, the system, we see that that job match score now goes up to 99%. So if it's feasible to get that person uh, back to that modified position, you can do it uh, directly in the system. Now, in some cases, you're not going to be able to do any sort of that uh, modification to that job. So what you're going to have to do is look at other possible jobs for this individual to return to. Now, if you do have that database built 
you can search directly within that company's uh, uh, database of jobs. Uh, otherwise, we can look at other jobs that are contained within that industry. So these are jobs that may or may not exist uh, with an employer, but they're an idea of some types of jobs that this person could be done. And once again, what we see uh, is filtering by that job match score um, to see which of those jobs the person is most capable of doing. If we have a bank of modified duty positions, we can also search by that. Um, but we can also start building uh, a list of jobs that we can approve and send uh, to uh, somebody in the company to get them to approve it uh, and have that person return to work. So I could send that list for approval and get it right to that person and they'd get that job match analysis uh, and they can start discussing the feasibility of having that individual uh, return to work. And like I mentioned before, you know, this can be done uh, many times uh, throughout the course of uh, a claim that's being handled. Um, if it needs to be done uh, you know, to get the person back to a modified position, and then you want to do the analysis again to get that person back to their original uh, pre-injury job, uh, that's entirely feasible uh, as well. We've, uh, we've gone with this job match score uh, as opposed to saying yes or no, simply so that we can get uh, a more detailed conversation uh, involving the employer and the claims manager uh, and really identifying you know, what this person uh, is capable of doing and getting them back uh, to that workplace. Now, in addition to that return to work analysis that we just showed there, um, we have uh, a couple of other tools that can be used to support claims handling. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is this psychosocial analysis. And the psychosocial analysis is a series of questions that were developed uh, by the Shirley Ryan uh, Research Institute in Chicago, uh, and they're meant to help identify different psychosocial regions that could pose barriers to somebody returning to work. For example, you, know, you have somebody who's working as a delivery driver, uh, they get in a bad car accident at work uh, and injure their back. Even if we get their back strong uh, and they're more than capable of returning uh, to the physical demands, if they're very fearful and anxious about returning to that job, chances are you're going to see some barriers and uh, you're going to see uh, some challenges in that return to work. So these questions that I'm checking off here uh, and answering, these can be answered by the claims handler. Um, they can be asked of the uh, patient uh, telephonically or in person. Uh, and what we'll do uh, is get a scorecard at the end of this that will give us an idea as to the overall risk this person is uh, facing when it comes to uh, doing their job uh, or their return to work process. So in this case here, we're seeing a high uh, risk for these psychosocial factors. And on our scorecard, we're going to see which domains they have the highest, uh, highest risk with. And we'll also see uh, what types of interventions can be included here to help get this person back on track with their return to work. So whether it's something like having cognitive behavioral therapy or uh, some type of, of exercise program, whatever it may be, uh, we have some suggestions for the types of interventions that can be adopted uh, to complement the existing physical rehabilitation program uh, while this person is returning to work. Now, similar to the functional abilities analysis, uh, this can be completed multiple times throughout the course of the claim being managed, uh, and you can start to track progress. So say that you do this right at the start of a claim uh, being handled, and then uh, two weeks later, you're noticing that the person is not making any progress, but their psychosocial risk assessment has remained high. You know, that's a real cue for you to say, we need to make sure that we get this person uh, into the appropriate intervention and make sure that we're dealing with those psychosocial issues uh, as well as uh, those physical, um, uh, physical limitations when it comes to the person's job. Now the final tool that we had uh, in here was a causation analysis tool. 
Uh, and the causation analysis tool allows us to select from a uh, list of uh, the most common uh, types of injuries, musculoskeletal injuries. And these musculoskeletal injuries uh, typically um, looking at things in the spine, the upper limb, uh, et cetera. And we're going to compare uh, some yes or no questions against what's been found in the AMA guidelines on causation. And this is the type of tool that you would use uh, when there was some sort of either confusion or some sort of uh, not really any clarity uh, when it comes to that person's uh, origin of their injury. So if somebody had a, a metal pipe fall on their foot, you know, you would not need this causation analysis tool. But if that person developed carpal tunnel syndrome and there was no specific occupational event, the causation analysis tool could start looking at some of the occupational and the non-occupational factors surrounding that person's uh, injury. So these yes or no questions, once again, can be completed by a doctor or by that claims handler. And what we'll do is select a yes or no to a variety of these, uh, these questions. And what we'll get, uh, once again, comparable to the psychosocial, is a list uh, in the form of a scorecard of which occupational uh, and non-occupational risk factors were present. In this case here, um, we're seeing that there's you know, two occupational factors and two non-occupational risk factors. So we would probably need to consult uh, additional resources to ensure that uh, we understand the causation uh, surrounding this job. And once again, uh, you could repeat that if the person had an additional diagnosis uh, related to, uh, to that uh, specific uh, claim. So we're able to keep all of the information that we need here uh, all in uh, this one return to work profile. And this can be updated uh, accordingly uh, throughout the, the uh, entire kind of timeline of a specific claim. And like I mentioned, uh, many of these tools can be repeated uh, at specific intervals to help you track progress. Uh, but really the point of this is to add a level of automation uh, and data uh, and data analytics to help you manage claims uh, more effectively, allowing you to get to more of them uh, and make the right decisions in the claims that you're handling. And once you're done, you can mark that as closed, uh, and it will still hang out in your, your system dashboard for future reference, uh, but we can also then start tracking time uh, to completion of the various modules. So uh, with that in mind, I can pass it back to you, uh, and we can start getting into uh, some of the questions. Sure, that sounds good. Right. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just make a couple comments before we uh, before I pass it over to Daphne for questions. I think, you know, one one thing I want to highlight is it's really a, a collaboration tool, right? So, you know, we're all in this together, trying to help people to get their lives back and to get back on the job. And one of the best ways to do that is is to communicate and collaborate. So. You know, the job profiler is a way to engage your providers and engage your employers around job demands, around causation analysis, around functional abilities, so we can have the right conversations and ultimately we can help the patient get back on the job and get their life back. And that's true of both the light version and the upgrade. So the light version is, you know, it's PDF, um, it's one-off customizations, but really the benefit in having employers provide and upload all their job descriptions and customize those, or one, they can store them in a cloud-based system, and then two, the case or claims manager can access the actual job description in real time and get that to the provider right away. And when you save a few days in the early stages of the claim, sometimes that translates into a couple weeks of savings because the longer somebody's off work, the more they develop that disability mindset. And this is a good way to make sure that the right resources are on the right claims and you're engaging those resources early and even proactively, you know, before the claim happens. The other thing I want to point out is, you know, the upgraded system is modular. So if you liked most of what you saw today, but, for example, you, know, you have a different process in place for causation analysis, but, but you like the return to work component, uh, the job profiling, the psychosocial, 
you know, it can be delivered that way. So we can customize on a, on a client level to include all of the modules or just some of them. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Daphne, for questions. All right, great. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Phil and Mike. Um, Phil, we have a question about what is the cost of this program? Yeah, good question. The million dollar question, right? So um, the good news is, it's, uh, though it's based on organizational size for the upgraded version, just like ODG is, so that's measured by, you know, the size of your organization, you know, including total claims and medical management staff, as well as the number of employers, if you're a payer that, that you have as a client base, we can scale you up gradually. So in other words, you're going to have some employers that are probably really keen to do something like this, and maybe other clients that don't necessarily have the time or interest to get on and upload their job descriptions. So we are offering introductory pricing where we can actually put select innovative and visionary clients on the smart return to work and job profiling solutions for say four clients or five or ten, but not all of them, and really only um, do the introductory rates to cover a few of those key clients and also prove the value to you. And that allows unlimited digitization and audit of all job demands at no cost to your employer clients, to those that participate. Now, obviously, the rate's still going to depend on the number of clients and your size, but if you'd like to participate in the introductory pricing, just send a reply email to the invitation or give us a call. Send an email to the help desk, which is odghelp at mcg.com or just request a follow-up in the post-event survey, and we'd be happy to put you in touch with a solutions consultant that can get you a proposal with that introductory pricing. All right, great, thanks. Um, let's see, here's a question I think think would be for Mike, but I'm not sure you can pass it along if it's not. Do the, profiles do the job profiles include cognitive demands as well? Yeah, definitely. They uh, they definitely do. Um, so we include things like the aptitudes that were in the original uh, dictionary of occupational titles, uh, as well as various sensory demands, uh, and that can be identified, uh, you know, the frequency or the magnitude um, that those demands are required. Uh, one of the things that I will do uh, is in the chat box, I will put in uh, one of the job profiles that I showed during my demonstration. Um, and you can, uh, you can take a look at that uh, and get an idea uh, as to, um, you know, what kind of demands are, uh, are seen there. All right, great. Um, also for you, Mike, where did the 30,000 standardized job descriptions come from? So the uh, standardized job descriptions came from an aggregate of various public data sources, uh, things like the DOT, uh, or the ONET um, and a variety of uh, other uh, sources that we kind of found. Um, so we've taken all of those and then run analytics on some of the data contained within. Uh, so it ends up being a proprietary database of that uh, 30,000 plus jobs. All right, great. Um, for Phil, can the preloaded job descriptions be modified by employers to more accurately fit their actual jobs? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as we talked about, just being a subscriber to ODG by MCG allows you to customize and modify the job descriptions on a one-off basis. So on the individual claim, you can go in and update the description or the demands. And you can do that right inside ODG. You don't have to leave the portal at all. Or you can send it to the employer if you need them to customize. And when they'll get a link that will log them into the, the upgraded portal, but at no cost to customize the job description on a one-off basis and send it back to you. Alternatively, if you'd like to actually store your own job descriptions, that requires an additional subscription to the upgrade. But either way, customization is available and encouraged because these standard job descriptions are a great start and mean that you don't have to start with a blank page and from scratch, but ultimately they're probably going to need some modifications for many of your claim files. All right, thanks, Phil. And um, I also have a question here about training. Is there any additional computer-based training available for this program? Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah we have uh, self-training modules, uh, self-training videos for all the modules, and then we also have an implementation specialist that's happily, happy to do live training, either online or even on-site. All right, great. Um, let's see, a couple questions for Mike here. Um, is there a 
any opportunity to have this customized to reflect Canadian-based information, or is this strictly a U.S.-based resource? Yep, right from the, uh, the units being uh, used in the job profiles, we can uh, do metric or imperial. Um, so the, uh, the jobs, uh, including a crosswalk to the MOC, is uh, upcoming, but uh, we are able to uh, customize the system so that it works uh, in different regions. All right, great. And it looks like this is our last question uh, for Phil. Does the job profile integrate with claim software programs much like ODG does? Absolutely. So, yeah, as I talked about, I mean, you know, the web-based solutions are our flagship products, and it's where, you know, the bulk of our users interact with our content. But we believe strongly that anything that can be automated really should be automated. We don't want to add, you know, another window for claims and medical management staff to have to go into. So everything that you saw today on the sites can also be delivered through a state-of-the-art API or application programming interface in real time with responses in, you know, a third of a second so that when you pull up a job title, you have a job description. When you pull up a diagnosis or claim, you have a duration immediately. And you can export and share it from those systems. Now, the only question is, what system are you using today, and have they integrated already? Many of the leading claims and medical management systems have already integrated ODG, and it's a simple flip of the switch to turn it on, either return to work, job profiling, medical management, or it's a system that hasn't integrated yet. And it's either then a third-party system from a claims or medical management software vendor, or it's an in-house system that you've built at a payer or TPA. In those cases, we can still integrate. It just involves creating the connections to the API. And again, we have an implementation specialist and a support team to help you do that and spec out you know, what kind of requirements you'd have on your side. We have designed them to be platform agnostic, so it's going to be as simple as possible, and we have uh, tools that actually write the XML or the JSON code for you so that you can see exactly what it looks like and that prevents any mistakes in creating the connections. All right, great. Well, I think we've answered all the questions. And for those of you who are um, <clears throat> saying that you missed some things or want to see a recording, don't worry. The recording will be sent to you within one week. And so then you can do it all you'd like. So thank you, Phil and Mike, for such a great uh, presentation, and thank you, everyone, for attending. And be sure to contact us at odghelp, H-E-L-P, at mcg.com, or 1-800-488-5548 if you have additional questions. Thanks, and have a great day. Wonderful. Thanks, guys.